what an insightful day. So we had a lot of learning from since morning and many eminent speakers spoke before us. So I'm a little nervous that you know whatever I'm going to say, will that make any sense or not? So it's a session on amalgamation of AI and heartfulness. So first segment we will talk about AI. As an educator, I strongly believe that children should at this age have no screen time and you know have their hands dirty in the mud. And they should be playing, they should not be in front of the screen. But with changing times, we all know they are digital natives and they are born with these devices in their hand. We have no way to stop them from not touching the device. The entire philosophy here is how that unproductive screen time can be productive and less. So that is what the uh, effort is to talk about in these 10-15 minutes, that how can we ensure that the whatever screen time our children have, that can be less and that can be productive. And we will see how AI is making its way into the early childhood education. So we all, uh, have you heard of the word co-pilot? Can you raise your hands if you have heard of this word co-pilot? Okay, anybody can respond that. Uh, what is co-pilot? Yes, Rashi ma'am. Uh, what is co-pilot? Okay, so that's the name of one of the Microsoft AI, like Google has Bard, Microsoft has co-pilot. So, uh, we all are dealing with an age group which is, they are not adults, they are not getting assignments for which they will make chat GPT or any other AI as co-pilot to help them in the assessments. We are dealing with an age group where AI can be a co-pilot for parents and teachers. So here students are not in the picture, who is in the picture? Parents and educators to whom AI can support to be a co-pilot and help in the child's well-being. Now, I'm going to give a quick glimpse of certain tools which can help parents. So this picture talks about what is artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is the ability of machines to mimic human behavior. Now we as um, individuals, the top most creation of the Lord, were born with some senses in human intelligence. So our five senses are now replicated into machine. So if we can touch, we can even machines you, if you touch a door, smart door opens, your laptop opens. If we can see, even machine can see, my phone opens with my face. So all the senses, like if we can smell, there are sensors through which smoke can be smelled. So there are detect sensors, detector, fire detector, pollution detector. So all our senses are also replicated into machines. So machines have become intelligent. And we had this power to think and take decision. That is also machines are taking decisions based on the data. Not on the naturally gifted intelligence, but based on the data that they collect. So in a way, the human behavior is being replicated into machine. Now how this artificial intelligence can be a buddy to a parent or a teacher and can create opportunities as far as early childhood is concerned. Now, see this picture here, when the AI started to make its intervention, it was in the form of robots who would automate certain tasks. So robots entered into automobile industries, assembling parts and not a human doing it. So all the mundane jobs were given to robots, from house cleaning to serving in the restaurants. But now AI is doing much more. So when we see this robot, so teacher is making child to interact with the robot. There was a time I remember, uh, in one of the schools where I worked, they used to give a teddy bear to each class. And they would say that this, uh, this is your class buddy. And the children would bring fancy things to decorate uh, that teddy bear and would say that this is our class pet or class friend. But now I see in some of the progressive schools, they have given one robot per class. And this robot uh, interact with the children. They come in the morning and they say, how uh, Jack or how John, whatever is the name, how Miko, how are you doing? and you know how is your day and the uh, robot also interact back with the children. So the times are changing, but how as parents and teachers we can use this technology? Now imagine there is a pollution break, there is a long holiday and you have lost connect with your children and you want some sort of technology to know what they are doing. So they have gadgets in their day, so we all have LMS or WhatsApp group. So what if a simple question pop up, how are you feeling my dear today? And then AI gives you some insight that how many kids are not enjoying being at home. So there is a paper that is being kept on the table and there is a QR code which is over there. If you scan, 
So it's just one simple question the teacher can send link. So I'll just show you if some of you can want to try. There is this Reflect app which is there. So teacher can use it to build self-awareness, empathy, grow vocabulary. So if you scan the question which is on your tables, one sheet is there. How are you feeling today? So how this app portrays the question, it gives some emojis. So if I go to using Reflect, so here is you can create your prompt. So you can go and get into the prompt like I created one which says how are you feeling today? So you just sign in into the app and the app name is Reflect. It's free to use. So after creating the prompt, you just have to share. So it's called check it. So suppose I say new check it and I say these are the prompts which are already there. So you can choose either the ready-made prompt or you can write your own prompt and say create check it and just share that link with the teacher, with the students. Now, at the end of the day, when people have given responses, it will show you through emojis. So there are four, five, six type of emojis on the home screen. So it will show you how many children are feeling bored at home, how many children are missing school, how many children are enjoying at home. So it gives an insight to the teacher that how, what are the kids doing at home and you can still make a connect when they are not in the school. So that is one example. Now, moving ahead, so I am sure uh, people in the house, if Vaishwaji, you can have some way that they have access to the presentation so that even later they can try. Another app is Groobly. So I would request everybody to just pay attention. This particular app can be used for fine motor skills. If you want your children at home to be productively engaged, you can go to this particular app and the app has inbuilt AR VR. This is like if given an opportunity, how would your doodle look like? For example, once I say start, so first of all, you have to one has to choose a shape that describes. So there were multiple shapes, I selected one. Then you have to choose your move your body. Now, for example, I have selected this particular doodle. So even in an online class with children or in class also you can call them at times and say what you are going to do, your doodle is going to do. So it takes a little time. Now for example, if I click on the record button and whatever I will do, my doodle is also going to replicate that. So if suppose I am doing like this, I can remove my face from the background and if I am going to do like this and whatever action you tell children what you are going to do, so you keep going, you can record it up to 15 seconds and whatever you are doing, your doodle will also do. So I forgot to remove my background, either. otherwise it would have taken it without my face and my creature and then it becomes my doodle. I can save it. So all the children can make their own doodles. So it's a way when they are feeling little, you know, sleepy and drowsy, you can call them, okay, we are going to make our doodles today. So they all can make, you can download and share it. We can export them as GIF images. So it's helped to develop the fine motor skills. You can ask them to do something spontaneously. So this is the second tool which early childhood educators can use. Very simple to try. You can just note down the names and even if later on you try yourself. So it's a video in the interest of time. I would just play some bit of it. So here there is a parent. She is talking about how Alexa has supported her in raising her child. So for example, she says that when I'm in kitchen, I can say, Alexa, can you help us with some yoga activities? And Alexa does now stand straight and up, and the child is following that. So the first thing what she explained is in physical activities, she is using digital assistant. Second, she has given a very beautiful example. She said that I want my child to learn time management and finish things on time. So I say, Alexa, now Rohit is going to finish the milk. Please reverse count from 50 to 1. And the Alexa starts reverse counting. And the child is able to is, is, will start drinking milk and is finishing within that time period. So the child has a sense of achievement where AI is helping the parent. So if the parent is doing something else, but the counting is done by Alexa in a very professional sound and it is engaging for the child. So she shows more examples that at bedtime when working parents are little tired, 
and they are not in a state to tell the stories. Even grandparents are not there. Ma'am was talking in the morning about nuclear families. And the child is expecting a story. You can use digital assistant, be it Alexa, be it Siri in your iPhone or Google Assistant in your phone. Can you tell a bedtime story on in friendship or in Hindi or in English, whatever language you want your child to be well versed with? So this is where digital assistant can help you in the stories. Now, one example, so I'm not playing the video, but the video talked about all of this. Just see this if it opens. I uh, can we have the voice for this uh, video? Just one. Very good. Now, Words are shown. 
so even for a child like we as a school try to practice it that every saturday alternatively one saturday hindi one saturday english passage has to go the child would read to an ai why the child is motivated to read in front of an ai and not of a teacher first ai is not going to judge the child now if i am reading the first time if my reading score was 65% in the class if i read you know with so much hiccup and stammer in between i may feel my i have a low self esteem but if i am reading to an ai and after 10 assignment if my reading score improves from 65% to 85% that's a sense of achievement and i am motivated to read further even there is reading coach which asks the child to repeat the mispronounced words Word. and we can even choose accent we want the ai to give suggestion to the child in english which is in indian accent or in american or in british whatever way you want now just last few more uh, tools so this also when we use microsoft forms uh, with parents or doing some survey with uh, the teachers there also ai give us insights that how in in terms of percentages in terms of trends so we can use all of these for our decision making so data driven decision is something which we all can do now this is a robot a miko so like when children come to class in the morning it's very difficult to settle them down so we try certain practices one of them is definitely mindfulness meditation in the morning so music is played all children sit on the mat and then they close their eyes they do meditation and after that when teacher wants to settle the class and take some time so we have got a uh, robot it's here if somebody wants to see we will can show it so the ma'am if you can just take it out from the back there so uh, the the children start to interact by the time teacher is putting up the resources the uh, the, the students start to interact with the robot and the robot has certain set questions which we can set it ask how are you all feeling today who is feeling sleepy can i sing a nursery rhyme for you so you can you know these kind of questions can be preset and it can be a buddy in the classroom for the teacher to just set up context in the morning and set the classroom so from here we will take a dive like from machines how we should connect everything to heart so i would invite sunita ma'am to now take over and tell us that how much intervention of technology is acceptable and where we have to draw a line thank you thank you sonia ma'am i must uh, i must admit here that if i was working under sonia vadwa ma'am i must be i mean terrified <laughs> like being 50 years plus it's it's very difficult for us to relearn and uh, i think i was the last one to start using uh, I mean, digital payments in my house because my son taught me that mom, mom this is becoming very embarrassing you have to learn that so uh, what i want to tell you here is that yes ai is a big friend for all the teachers but uh, just imagine to set up an ai and to set up all these codings and things like this and having toy based learning having experiential learning i'm sure a lot of hard work goes into the planning of this kind of you know experience in the classroom so it's not just children who are anxious who are stressed it is our teachers who are extremely stressed so in silvan education trust we introduced a new practice called heartfulness and i have been fortunate enough to coordinate this initiative for silvan group of schools so i'll be talking a little bit about heartfulness so ai is a big friend for all of us in our life it is a big boon as sonia vadwa ma'am said that the parents can use ai something like alexa to engage the children or to teach difficult concepts which as parents they may not be aware how this particular concept should be taught uh, and uh, of course even when we talk about mindfulness or yoga or meditation there are apps which are very useful in doing so these are two apps i'm not going to open these apps one is breathe think and do 
So this helps a child to uh, spell out the feelings that the child is having, whether the child is feeling happy, the child is feeling anxious, the child is feeling jealous of somebody, the child is feeling angry, because uh, many a times our preschoolers, they are uncomfortable, but they don't know what exactly is making them uncomfortable. So giving words to their emotions is very important. So this is one app which can help in, uh, you know, spelling out the emotions that we are having and second of course uh, is if you want to introduce mindfulness in the classroom or meditation in the classroom the second app can help us do that mindful powers so it tells the child that okay close your eyes take deep breaths then uh, think about your day or something like this But of course there are some downsides also of the AI and that's when we started realizing that all of us need to go back to our spirituality or mindfulness and meditation. So some of the possible downsides of AI can be dehumanization of learning. It displaces opportunities for the real world social interactions and the human touch. It actually happened in our school. During COVID, one pre-nursery child, he was at home and both the parents were working and they just gave a phone to the child that, okay, you can attend your classes, you can listen to this music or you can listen to rhymes and then of course the child ventured into video games and he got so engaged that he lost touch with people. And the stage uh, was such that the child uh, was diagnosed as autistic. But when we brought it further, we found out that this is not real autism. It is a virtual autism in the child. And it has happened. He is scared to talk to people. He is scared to have an eye contact with people. Because he is so used to having eye contact only with the machine that he is having in his hands. He refused to talk to the parents. He refused to come to the school. So it was very difficult to bring him back. And as uh, Dr. Vinita Kaul was saying, and I agree 100% with that, playful, I mean, uh, playful activities in the school, when you are not there, they are deciding their rules, they are deciding that, okay, who will become papa, who will become mummy, and uh, who will bring the milk from the market, and things like this. That's when the children learn skills to collaborate with each other or adjust with each other. Many a times during group activities what happens is I may not be liking the idea which the other child is giving. Then the other child has to be convincing enough to have me in his team that no please listen to me. I want to do this because I have this kind of suggestion. So convincing others, adjusting to others and coping with the different kinds of feelings. This is what one learns only in you know maybe in the playground when they are playing or maybe in the class when they are having some uh, spontaneous playtime. So replacement of social interaction to AI can actually help in displacing important activities in the development like social interaction, physical play, unstructured creative play. This is what Vinita Kolman was talking about. And this can lead to social development delays. The child will not be able to speak properly. He will not be uh, able to, you know, go up to somebody and request for something. He will not be able to tell what exactly is going on in his mind. And that's how the crimes can take place. Like if the child is with a nanny and something has happened at home and the child is not able to convey that to the parents, it can be very scary. So this can lead to something like virtual autism, where you have impaired social skills, language and communication delays. A child who is five year old should have a certain vocabulary. He will not be able to have that kind of vocabulary. Sleep problems can happen. He'll be scared while sleeping. Attention difficulties in the classroom, emotional and behavioral uh, hiccups can be there and reduced physical activity. The child will refuse to go out and play with other children. So this is the child I'm talking about and he's just six year old and we are working on this child now and trying to bring him back to the mainstream and this happened during those two COVID years. 
another uh, downside of ai is that somehow our own creative thinking gets compromised the child will not be able to figure out what exactly i want to do let's say uh, i mean a few days back we had an innovation festival in our school so the biggest reason why an innovation takes place is because our children our young generation they are empathetic to the needs of the society unless and until a child realizes that a rickshaw wala has to work so hard you know when he is driving a cycle rickshaw and then the child thinks that why can't i make it make an e rickshaw so that the life of this rickshaw wala becomes better so this this came out of empathy and concern for the society so a child who is not able to do creative thinking who is not able to think about others who is not able to share the problems which others are facing will not be able to do this so if we really want innovation to happen we should you know uh, focus on creative another uh, possible downside of ai is content and addiction it gives a dopamine rush to the child when he is on a video game and he is winning he is killing people and winning but this can again become repetitive and the child may enter into a loop and may lose touch with the reality yes so heartfulness practices how they are important and how they help us so the first thing we do in salwani group of schools in the morning is meditation so when we meditate we allow all the kind